This is a photo of the Indian Army troops marching into Goa in December 1961. What followed was the historic liberation of Goa from 450 years of Portuguese rule. Whenever we remember India's struggle for freedom, it is almost always in context of the British colonization. We often forget that there were parts of the subcontinent under a different European power, one that was the first to arrive in India in 1498, when Vasco da Gama sailed into Calicut and the last to leave. While the rest of the country was leading marches against the British, residents of Diu, Daman, Dadra and Nagarhaveli, Goa and Anjedeva Islands were protesting against the Portuguese. In Goa, the independence movement gained momentum in the early 20th century. The abolition of the Portuguese monarchy in 1910 raised hopes that the colonies would be granted self-determination. However, when Portugal's brutal colonial policies remained unchanged, an organized and dedicated anti-colonial movement emerged. One of the first persons to call for an independent Goa was journalist Louis de Menezes Braganza. He co-founded Goa's first Portuguese daily, O Heraldo, and through his writings, created political consciousness among his fellow Goans. As a reaction to growing dissent, the Portuguese government curtailed civil liberties, including censorship of the press and public gathering. A new act, Acto Colonial, was also brought into effect, which effectively made Goans second-class citizens in the Portuguese Empire. But in 1946, freedom fighters Juliao Menzies and Ram Manohar Lohia openly defied government orders and addressed a public meeting in Goa where they called for a revolution. At the forefront of Goa's freedom movement was Louis de Menezes Briganza's brother-in-law, Dr. Tristão de Briganza Cunha, who is also known as the father of Goan nationalism. He staunchly opposed colonial rule. Dr. Tristão was court-martialed and imprisoned, first at Fort Aguada in Goa and then in the Penique Fortress in Portugal. After his release from prison in 1954, Dr. Tristau was moved to Bombay and set up the Goa Action Committee in the city as an umbrella body to coordinate the Goan Freedom Movement. Meanwhile, Indian revolutions kept crossing the Goa border and raising the Indian flag as a form of symbolic protest. For example, in 1954, a few protesters overpowered Portuguese soldiers, planted the Indian tricolor at Fort Tirakul and managed to keep it flying for 22 hours. Soon proponents of Goa's freedom from outside Goa tried to enter Goa to launch Satyagraha campaigns. The first such batch was led by Maharashtrian freedom fighter Senapati Bapat. But the Portuguese had blocked all entry points and the protesters were lati charged and imprisoned. Between 1955 and 61, the Indian government adopted a wait-and-watch approach with numerous representations to the Portuguese Prime Minister Antonio de Oliveira Salazar. But with no end to the stalemate in sight, in 1961, Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru said the time had come to consider afresh what method should be adopted to free Goa from Portuguese rule. And thus, the Indian government launched Operation Vijay in December 1961, a military operation for the liberation of Goa. The Portuguese had already anticipated this, and while the Indian army was preparing to storm Goa, the Portuguese were preparing to take their assets out of the territory. Gold deposited by the Goans and the Goa branch of the Portuguese bank, Banco Nacional Ultramarino, were shipped off to Lisbon. They were also planning to transport the casket containing the relics of St. Francis Xavier to Portugal. To prevent the Indian army from entering Goa, 
bridges were blown up. But the Indian military not only used land forces to attack the Portuguese, it also deployed the Navy and the Air Force. Indian forces under General Sagat Singh were airdropped into Panjim, where they swiftly took control of the capital. Vastly outnumbered and overpowered within 36 hours of fighting, Governor General Vasalo A. Silva, defying Salazar's orders, signed the instrument of surrender on 19th of December 1961. Thus swiftly and dramatically, over four centuries of Portuguese rule in India came to an end.